Gonna build a mountain from a little hill. Gonna build a mountain. Hi guys, welcome to Simproved, Fry speaking here and welcome back to another video. This time it's my first look video at Planet Zoo, an upcoming simulation game where you can build your own zoo, manage it, build all the buildings, have lots of tons of cute animals and I'm super excited for this game. And the developers were so nice to give me one hour of recording of this upcoming game which will come out on 5th of September. September? No, November. And yeah, I met them at Gamescom and this is basically the one hour of the recording of the upcoming game. So this is going to be absolutely amazing guys. I'm super excited to show you, especially since this is a game that I'm super looking for for this year. Since the trailer came out, I have been stoked to play it. and. I'm just really, really sure that Sims players as you and me are gonna love it as well. So here we are in the recording. Um, there will be, of course, different animals. There will be a totally big, huge build mode like you guys maybe know from Planet Coaster, which is also a game from Frontier Developments. And I've been playing Planet Coaster a lot as well. But this time it's with zoo animals, so of course I'm gonna play it. It's I love animals, I love building, so it's basically two of my favorite thin, si things together. And here we are in the Savannah biome with a already built zoo, which has like this Indian temple kind of buildings. They are totally self-built, like this is what you can build in this game, it's amazing. And this is basically a new biome that you haven't seen yet. Like this is a zoo that nobody has ever seen. This is the first video ever <laughs> that shows that kind of stuff. Also we will show you or we will look at some animals. And while I was recording this, I had a developer sitting right next to me. I was fangirling all the time. Her name was Sam, she does QA. And she was explaining me all the different things here. And also she had like a whole kind of gameplay already thought out, you know, what to look at. So basically she was the kind of quest giver. <laughs> of course, there will be also quests in this game. If you want to, there's a whole sandbox mode. There will also be a career mode where you can step by step learn all of the mechanics behind all the zoo animals, the staff, the... Um, yeah, the visitors and all that kind of stuff. It's really, really cool. And yeah, basically she told me the first quest is there are some visitors running around, running away from an animal, find them. And yeah, I did. They were running away from a rhino that has apparently broken out of its habitat. So now we are off to find that rhino and fix kind of like the zoo here. There is Ryan. He is a rhinoceros, an Indian rhinoceros. I'm really sorry if I mispronounce all of the animals' names. I'm really, really bad at this. But basically we found Ryan. And uh, we have to find why uh, he has broken out. And uh, it was kind of like a find the habitat kind of challenge sometimes. She was, of course, pointing at me. So Sam, if you're watching this, I'm not sure if she ever does. But thank you so much. I had like lots and lots of fun playing it and uh, listening to all your cool informations about this game. She's also really, really excited about the game, of course. And she said that she loved creating it or being part of the whole, uh, you know, team creating this game. And it was really, really like insightful. So we found the habitat and there was a barrier missing. Here you can see that there are different barriers, so-called fences. Uh, there are different ones. You do have full-on control about what color I think they can be. So, for example, if you choose like a concrete barrier, you can also choose the color. There's basically what we miss in The Sims, a color wheel. <laughs> so this is something that we already know from Planet Coaster, that there is like full-on control about all of the you know, colors and stuff in build mode. And here we are uh, getting us uh, some veterinarians, I think. I uh, had to place three down to um, catch Ryan and bring him back into his habitat, of course. So there he goes, oh, down he goes, <laughs> sleeping. And here's a cool little feature. They get into a box and the box is smaller than and the staff members can uh, easily carry them around. He's a very, 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 very bodybuilder. I don't know, 
he has lots of strength, that veterinarian. But yeah, basically he brings him back into the habitat. And there we go. Box goes up. Boom. It's so cutely animated, by the way. And still, some people are still running away. And it is because Ryan also has a wife. A wife rhino. And she got far away, like way back there another vet found her and is now bringing her back to the habitat that was really really funny because sam told me like wow usually the rhinos are like slow walkers but she must have run there <laughs> so it is really really fun also throughout the whole gameplay here we can see uh, the beautiful rhino there's an animal an animal camera i'm sorry um and uh, yeah, it was, it's really, really cool. You can basically double click on every um, animal and then have like this animal camera that kind of, you know, has like a full on widescreen of the whole animal. And they are beautifully animated. Just look at how the tail is working, how sometimes the ears twitch, especially with wild cats and stuff like this. And it's really, really cool. And I love these kinds of games where you can build, but also it's like kind of relaxing. Like if you just want to take a pause, you can just look at the animals and look, he's rubbing his side on this enrichment kind of objects that are also in the game. So basically a whole planet zoo feels like very much into conservation of animals. So there's always this huge aspect to make your animals feel, you know, safe and secure and happy and you know really like the habitat and also there are lots and lots of things that come into play here so of course you have to have a nice habitat like with the plants that they like and uh, no problem in the build mode for the habitats there will be t different filters that show you what kind of um, plants are okay which kinds of you know um, ground floor soil is okay um, and you can also learn a lot of the animals through this game. And then there is another thing that some animals are, of course, very shy. So they won't, don't want to be seen by the visitors. So there will be, later on, we will show you the one-sided glass panels that you can put into your barrier. So that the animals can't look out, but their visitors can look in. And they think they are basically alone. Um, which is very, very important for some shyer animals that we will look at later. For example, the animals antelopes and here we are in the menu on the right that you can see that he is a, they are a little bit hungry I think wow oh, the hydration wasn't so good so we will get us some um, some staff some what were they called the, the the zookeeper animal keeper and they are there to feed the animals they are there to clean the poop basically and clean the habitat of course so they your animals don't get sick and uh, also there are these enrichment objects that are basically helping your animals to not get so bored so for example for a rhino they need to scratch apparently so they get like this scratching pole there's like a really cool feeder for a giraffe I've seen um, so there are different enrichment objects for different animals, of course, that you can put up there. And yeah, also here she, Sam explained me the barriers, how the barriers work. So if you think that the fences, the barriers look a little bit ugly, you can basically hide them into um, buildings as well. And there is an insane amount of detail in the collision engine, whatever. They have their own engine in the game. And basically your animals can step onto stairs and interact with the houses that you built there as well. So you can basically also, as you can see here, use some of the building objects to put over the barriers. And also you can, I think, make the barriers kind of disappear. So basically if you don't like to have like these fences and want to maybe do like an open safari kind of world, this is totally possible and would, will look like this uh, with some tricks, I guess, uh, in the game. And yeah, I think that's really, really cool. There are basically no restrictions whatsoever what you can do with a habitat. Of course, myself, I really want you guys to keep care of your virtual little animals. And also, it's it's just beautiful how, how cute the animals are, like how... Um, detail these animals are it's really, really cool here we go to the antelope habitat and we have some antelopes in there and i'm sorry what is this called oh i, I 
yeah i'm sorry <laughs> i always clicked so quickly on the oh i want to look at the, the animal camera and here we have one antelope and he she is playing or she he it's a she probably she is playing with one of these ball weights and look the others can pick it up as well also throughout this whole gameplay the one hour that you're going to experience experience it's basically it really felt as if you're playing with real animals so sometimes we wanted them to do here for example wanted to show how grace gracefully these antelopes are and in that moment she pooped <laughs> it was just so funny so yeah they really have their own head and act like the animals that they are the animations are absolutely beautiful and also yeah like it felt like doing with an animal because sam wanted to show me like how they play with certain things and then oh oh she's walking up oh no okay no she didn't like that <laughs> so it was really uh, funny to see here we can see one of the zookeeper or like the animal keepers um sucking up the poop with like this poop sucker <laughs> this is what i'm going to call it it's a little poop hoover or something like this. And here we can also already see the two-sided glass or one-sided glass uh, in the barrier. So basically this is like a concrete barrier where you could also see that they changed the color to a kind of red to fit the whole theme. And yeah, it's actually a really, really cute kind of um, detail that you can change all the colors. The lighting is exceptional and also all the informations about your uh, animals is really really cool here you can see that next to the sprinkler the fur even looks wet so your animals sometimes need to cool off of course so since this is like in the savannah biome and we have a uh, full-on sunlight it's maybe too hot so they want to you know cool down a little bit next to a sprinkler or in a little water pool or something like that and then you will also see that the animals get wet and have like wet fur textures, which is really, really cute. And here we can see one eating. It's just so, so cute. <laughs> um, and yeah, basically you have like everything uh, in the uh, little um, animal info box. If you click on them, how they feel, there are different tabs. And here we can see the habitat is not up to up to the best so temperature is a little bit low i think should be better so she should be um go over to the sprinkler and then cool cool down so they basically do that themselves if there is a sprinkler or some sort of object or uh, environment and there you can see and we have a green um bar already and yeah there's something wrong with her habitat she isn't really uh, that happy about it so we have to paint a little bit more terrain so for example you can see that there's a little um, marker and it has to be inside of the bar that is shown here so we need some short grass we need some long grass and we need less sand i think so basically we will paint a little bit over the sand and make this whole habitat a little bit greener so they feel yeah a little bit more comfy and it's more about you know how the environment in the real world and the in the in the wild is for them and it's really really easy you can see the bars basically show you very very quickly how good you're doing and if everything is fine here it was actually really really easy to um, do this so uh, don't be surprised of course it's like the spray paint in sims you can choose how big the size of the sprayer is how the intensity is etc so you can go really really crazy with that and yeah i just it's it's beautiful it's a beautiful game also you can already see it's dawn right now and here we can see the two-sided window so from that side we can look in and the visitors can look in and see the animals but the animals can see the visitors so you can basically choose that option on i think every barrier i'm not sure but i think yes uh, there is this option that you have two-sided glass or one-sided glass whenever you want and uh, basically you can also see and hear the visitors always like oh this is a, like they have their own kind of simlish language that we know from the sims here it is called planko but it's basically also like some gibberish kind of um yeah language so sometimes they talk and like blah, 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 and it basically sounds like oh my god this is a cool animal and you can already see the reaction and hear the reaction from the visitors um looking at the animals so uh, if they get close really close to the animals and can see them 
they are especially happy and they can also donate money for the animals so this is also pretty really cool a really cool <laughs> idea and uh, yeah basically they're always happy here you can already see that we have night so there's a day night cycle that we already know from planet coaster you can always set the n daytime to whatever you want and uh, this is also really really cool to see like a dynamic environment here as well here you can see that there is some sleeping places i'm not sure how what it's called in english again but basically every animal needs like a sleeping place and uh, you can build a, a roof over them here we are in the donation box so here you can see they already got 100, 120 million or 120,000. I think 120,000 dollars, Planko dollars or whatever. And there's also a list on what kind of animal that like grants the most money, for example, for donations. This is not the only way how you can make money. Of course, you can make money in the zoos by selling, you know, merchandise and drinks and food for the visitors and also of course you can get a fee like an entrance fee and uh, this is also like a cool version how to get money and uh, for example um, research new uh, stuff for the animals like new enrichment items or everything that can make them happy new treatments all that kind of stuff and it is absolutely beautiful at night. Look at this, the lighting. Just I don't want, I want to know who built this, like from the from the team, from the developer team. But it is absolutely beautiful. And here we can see you can slide the daytime to whatever you want, and look how beautiful this is. This is just amazing. I absolutely love this, especially the slider. It's just so dynamic and oh my God, I want to have this in every game now. <laughs> oh my God, it's really, really cool. And here you can also not only set the daytime, you can also set the weather. So of course, because I'm a little bit extreme and I really wanted to see how snow looks because snow is actually a really, really hard thing to do in a game to simulate properly. Here we go, snow comes falling down. Since this is the Savannah kind of deserty desert ish biome the snow won't lay there but if you have like a grassland biome or even a snow biome i think they're gonna have uh, then yeah the snow will keep going there and also the temperature will go down rapidly now so for every animal every visitor it's gonna be cold now and you have of course to keep track that all of your especially tropical and desert animals are gonna to be are going to be happy so here we can see that whole th sh spiel here because the antelopes of course actually like it to be a little bit hotter and now it's pretty really cool so we are going to look at the uh, snow for example here's another thing the animals since it's so cold go under the little building here where they have their resting place and there's no snow so there's basically no snow falling under roofs and the whole you know, the game already knows where the snow is falling and where it's not. This was something that I absolutely loved. Here's um, a little heat kind of map. So you can see how the animals in green are happy. It's their temperature. Um, and the blue animals... Oh no, yeah, the blue animals are the ones that are cold. And uh, there's different sliders for water, for heat, for how happy they are. You know, all that stuff. So when it's cold, for example, the animals get um, blue, which is basically they're too cold and red is too hot. And here we can see that under, because there's no snow falling through that roof, it's warmer for them and they automatically, because they're feeling cold, will go there on their, like, for themselves and uh, warm up a little and cuddle. It's so cute. <laughs> and basically... Uh, it's just amazing how well animated and also how good the art artificial intelligence of these animals is because I was really really surprised how exact the whole feel of this was like how you know how it really felt as if they're real animals that's how good the artificial intel intelligence of these animals is like done so yeah since i wanted to free the poor poor antelopes from being too cold <laughs> I, I set it to uh normal weather like no clouds no snow and here we are in the next barrier which is a tapir 
bearded tapir. I'm a braid tapir. I'm not a bird tapir. Yeah, a tapir. And this is also such a cute animal. Look at this. <laughs> Also, this is an animal that I think nobody has ever seen before this video. So basically, uh, this is uh, the first confirming of, yes, there is a tap here in the game. And there will be, I think, over 50 animals. 50 animals will be in place game. And if you have the deluxe version downloaded, you can enter the pre-release pre beta and have three more animals as well. So, uh, yeah, lots of animals and, of course, more to come. And look how cute. Look, they even interact with each other and they really like it. They, wow. <laughs> Maybe we have to mm, give them some privacy. I'm not sure. But, yeah, basically, you will see them interact a lot. And the tap here is so, so cute. It's a really, really interesting animal. And look how beautiful they're animated. <laughs> I especially love their bum. Look how cute it is. It's like a... Their behind is just the cutest. <laughs> the small little tail. But yeah, did you see that they twitch with the ears sometimes? And of course we have some pooping. We have lots of pooping, by the way, in this whole um, recording. Because every time I remember, like, close up, already Sam, the developer, sitting next to me, was like, oh my god, I'm pooping a lot. <laughs> They're not behaving their best, showing everything. So here we have an enrichment problem in the habitat. So basically, we need to put them some food in there. Um, and of course, uh, something to play with, for example. And um, yeah, here we are uh, looking at the build menu. In habitat, we go to enrichments. And uh, while the tapir is swimming in the water, we will filter for the tap here and there you can already see all the enrichments that you can use for them. And of course I wanted to see like a ball. So we needed a food enrichment and we needed a toy enrichment. So something to play with. And this is for example for a, a food enrichment. It's a barrel where there's I think food in there and they have to roll it to get to the food. So they have to actually work to get to food. Which is basically making it a little bit more interesting to get uh, some treats, for example, for the animal. And also there is, for example, a tiny little ball that you can place there. The little plates that you can see there is basically so you know where the ball is. So you can click on that object and also reset it and the ball will respawn there. And uh, of course I wanted to put in a little sprinkler so that they can all also cool off uh, not into the water but you know somewhere in the habitat somewhere else and of course um your animals will interact with it here you can see that he played with the ball and just sorry that i had the heat way the heat map on but basically yeah they're gonna interact with all this kind of stuff and use it for their you know for their lives if they get bored they play with the toy if they want to cool off they go in the water or use or use the sprinkler and if they want to sleep they go to their sleeping resting mat place kind of thing so it's actually a really 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 detailed game and i especially love you know just looking at these animals look at how beautiful the fur now looks like it's really glowy <laughs> because it's wet so all these kinds of details are just amazing it's also really easy to replace some of the items it was a little bit too close to the water and if it gets to the water the tapirs can't get it out so i wanted to put it a little bit more far away to the into the habitat so yeah this is basically how easy you can um, enrich the lives of your animals in there and here we can see that she is already pregnant our 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 top here lady is pregnant and maybe later we will see a little baby tap here hmm? <laughs> yes later we will see a baby tap here so yeah please stay tuned in the video we will look at a baby tap here of course every animal in this game can have babies and uh, reproduce and they are also all you know animated and i think they gradually gradually grow so it's not like in the sims that you have like from baby to toddler and then boom they're a kid and then they're a teenager here it's more gradually so maybe you don't want to see it because it's like so slow but basically yeah they gradually grow and you can see all the stages and stuff 
Here we had the problem that there wasn't enough coverage for them because tapirs actually like it a little bit more overgrown and you know want to hide in the bushes and stuff. And since I already had the filter for the tapir on, um, I could uh, choose from all these plants. There's basically so many plants in there. Like for builders, this is just amazing. I'm so excited to play along with, like, play with this game and look at all the stuff. And um, don't be afraid that because it's like a savanna animal that you only get like three trees. No, there are tons of tr trees and foliage, foliage that you can choose from. So they have t like way, way more. Um, plants and trees than we had in Planet Coaster because it's such an important uh, aspect here, of course. Um, so yeah, it's it's amazing. So since I placed this huge tree, I just wanted to see how huge it is. Um, we were going a little bit over coverage, as you can see. So we are going to delete some of the uh, other plants because I really wanted to get this huge tree. I just thought it looks really, really cool. So basically the tree is basically for them you know to have some shadowy spots so they can rest in the shade and also they like coverage for example jungle animals will like more uh, or need more coverage than of course maybe a savanna animal so uh, yeah i'm not that you know the super animal you know i'm, I'm not a soup keeper myself so this is um interesting for me because I can learn about all the different animals. So this is a gharial, also not never ever been seen in a Planet, Co uh, Planet Zoo video before. And I'm actually amazed how well they are animated. So yeah, there are also some more, you know, water animals, so to speak. Of course, they can go on land. But uh, there are some animals that will mainly, of course, focus to be in the water. And uh, here we have one, and look how beautiful. <laughs> it's just amazing how good they're animated. I especially love that camera mode. You will see that throughout. And they're just resting in the shade, and we had a problem with the habitat. So the water here is not clean enough for the poor little animals. So uh, what we are going to do is to filter the uh, water a little bit more. And there are different functions that you can do. Uh, for example, for the water, you need a water pump. Um, other things will also play uh, a factor here. Of course, if the habitat is a little bit more, you know, full with poop because no animal keeper, animal, I don't know what they're called, zookeeper is like um, not cleaning it enough, for example, then also the water, I think, gets more like dirty more quickly. So uh, you can see like lots of the visitors on the right side. Oh yeah, you can also go into the water, by the way, with the camera. And we can see, wow, you can see nothing. <laughs> it's so, so dirty. So we have to take care of that. And um, in facilities, you can find tons and tons of uh, things that are, you know, more of the behind the scenes thing. And here we have uh, like a... I don't know what it was like a water cleaner filter system for example and if you have uh, you can see that there's like this round circle and every water part that this uh, circle touches will be clean so also if it's just partially t touching one of the other waters they will be filtered as well like fully so uh, yeah you want to um, construct that of course so your animals don't get sick which they can by the way your animals can get sick and also you need of course a vet and some diseases will spread to the other animals as well so you have to really take care of them being happy and have clean water have a clean habitat and you know uh, having them happy so here we go really quickly the water is filtered and now we can go to one of the waves. Uh, okay, this is one of the maps and this is the visitor um, happiness. So these kinds of facilities, background facilities, like zookeeper hut, the filter system, all that stuff that kind of reminds people that there is more than just animals to look at. They don't like to see. So you may want to hide them in like a back lot or also maybe put like a, a little house over it, you know, so your, your guests don't 
don't get too distracted by that. I really don't want to see that kind of stuff. Here it's not that big because it's like a small little ring. And here the gharial is already going into the water again. And we can see in the water now. So since you can, this is something that I'm going to do when I play Planet Zoo is for example, do one barrier full of glass. So your visitors can see into the water with like some of the water animals. So this is going to be amazing. I'm so looking forward to that. And yeah, basically you can now see the gharial swim. He's super happy and likes to use the water again and also doesn't get sick. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Now, which are we doing now? So since I couldn't record the, the, the voiceover, I'm doing the voiceover now, obviously. Um, I have to remember what we did <laughs> in this short amount of recording. So here we are in mandrel, in the mandrel habitat. Mandrels are is monkeys, I guess, or apes. I'm not sure where the difference in the English language are. I think monkeys would be the term, they are smaller. And here is a female mandrel. You can already see they can't get up to, you know, they can't climb a normal wall, so to speak. Um, but they can climb the stairs that you can see in the back there. This is Hambadon. Hambadon? Hambadon. <laughs> Hambadon is a female. She's quite happy at the moment. And there we were looking for a male. Oh, there we go. A Dunby. And a Dunby is basically a beautiful male. And here we were looking at especially the social system that some animals have. So for example, monkeys are a very social animal that need others of their own kind in the habitat, which is really, really, you know, to make them happy and to simulate their real life, wildlife kind of life. And therefore, I think in a mandrel system, you have an alpha male and like some females in one herd or I don't know, pack or something like that. Um, and they also inside of their pack, which will automatically build, like build up if you place them into the habitat. They will have some rivalries and sometimes also fight. So we will look at the fight later that will happen. We weren't sure if we will see that, but basically, um, you know, the animals uh, will, you know, do their own rank system, pack system automatically. There's nothing you can do about this because these are animals and you can't control that. But it's actually, you know, so much more closer to real life, to nature. So here we had again some terrain problems there were there was too much sand and we needed again more long grass and um more uh short grass i guess yeah so yeah you, here you can already see how the spray paint so to speak works it's really really easy and uh, it was just amazing how you could have the build mode open while the zoo is still running. You know that in Sims we know that there's build mode and there's life mode. But you can't build while the Sims are still, you know, doing their stuff. So that always a little bit bothered me. And in Planet Coaster and then of course here again in Planet Zoo you can just do that along the way, you know. And do that while the park or while the zoo is still running. And this is like an aspect that I really liked about the always the Frontier simulation games. In my opinion, this is so far definitely the best zoo anime, like the best animal animation I've ever seen in any computer game. It's absolutely stunning how detailed they all walk, how they their artificial intelligence works, you know, that they cool off if they... Um, if it's too hot for them that they all have their own social system in their herd or in their pack. It's just amazing how detailed these are. And it really feels like real animals. Like I usually don't have that. Like I'm for... Like how many times do you have like, oh yeah, it's just like an animal. It's like a virtual animal that doesn't really exist because they do like f freaky computer game stuff that no real anima does. But in this game, we don't have that. And it's just amazing. I, it's, uh, yeah. So if you're into animals and if you're into building and like simulation kind of tycoon management games, this is totally for you. And I also think if some of these aspects is maybe nothing for you. For example, I'm not that big into management stuff. 
Um, uh, there is always like a, like a preset default thing how these things can work. So if you don't want to do the whole, if you do, just want to build like a whole zoo, um, basically you can just cheat money or have like unlimited money um, and, uh, you know, go from there. If like me, you don't like the whole management aspect. Um, if you are more into just playing with the animals, you can just go, go on close up and see how to improve the habitats and stuff like that. So that's also pretty cool. And here we are into another feature, which is also amazing. So everything you can build there in the climbable, climbable, climbable build mode is basically climbable for animals that can climb for example like these mandrels and uh, they needed something to climb so this is uh, uh, what you can build yourself i will use some of the blueprints that are already in game and like always with the planet coaster that we already knew the blueprints can be uploaded to the steam workshop and they're basically it's basically like sharing over the sims gallery just that it's steam of course and you can also download zoos from others you can also download blueprints for houses for facilities for habitats uh, basically everything that you can build you can upload and download from others which is amazing so they really like to climb and we needed lots and lots of climbing thing because the whole habitat is like so huge and uh, yeah basically they will climb um i was so unlucky that they just didn't want to climb that <laughs> so be aware here that i can't show you because it's it's real animals they're not going to do exactly what you want them to do and also there's no option to hey go climb there <laughs> but yeah basically i Play, place down some of the climbing uh, equipment there so to speak but uh, every little platform that you can see in every pole you can also build yourself so and they will also climb that like I, there's no other game where you can see animals interact with your climbable objects that you built yourself this is the first game that has that and it's amazing like i will of course go into that deeper when i get my hands on planet zoo again and yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Pooping again, like always. So yeah, we were looking at the mandrels to see if they run over and like go to climb because she, Sam really wanted me to show how animals climb, but we had this all the time, like playing with animals. <laughs> they were not exactly doing what you wanted them to do, but I really enjoyed that. It was really, really cool. And here in the background, you can see some of the females having a fight, for example. So that will happen. They can also get, um, not sick, but get like a scratch or something that maybe needs some tending. So that can happen. So you also have to look uh, not only after the habitat, you also have to look after your animals to see if the whole pack herd kind of socials inside is working out. So you may have to reconsider how many females you have, if you have uh, like more than one female or uh, stuff like that. So it's really, really interesting. And maybe you have also to provide like another habitat or like another way where they can go to, to be alone, you know, and calm down. Here you can see that the human are like, walking over and as always you can send like animals from one spot to the other in the habitat and then they will have this box over them and the box will jump to that um, point so that's also like a cool solution of animation and yeah they just didn't want to climb that <laughs> but they're going to definitely uh, i'm pretty sure um I wasn't the only one that recorded this kind of zoo so basically this is going to happen in other um, people's videos as well, I guess, where you can see them climbing. Also, there will be, there are already some live streams of the Greenlands biome uh, with like a first tutorial zoo, I think, which is like in an English colonial kind of style. So, uh, yeah, basically, uh, they can climb that. So, yeah. So here we are in the tapir because she was pregnant, wasn't she? And we were looking for the baby tapir, really hoping that we would see a baby tapir. Still no tapir. Um, so we were going to do another habitat. And if you just go on the building, you can click onto the barrier and then just slide it over. It's like basically like the pass system, maybe. You can also make the panels longer. You can change the color, you can change what kind of, you know, um, 
window is there if there's even a window in there and yeah all that kind of stuff it's like really open an open build mode which is just amazing so yeah here we uh, did the whole barrier and um, sorry there's a train running next to me recording again and we will put in the windows for example and uh, here we can see uh, where you can choose what side on the windows are. So is the window from outside to inside or from the outside, uh, from the inside to the outside, etc. So you can basically choose all that and uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, very, very interesting to play around with that as well. Um, of course, the whole zoo was already like a built masterpiece. I'm not sure if I will ever pull this off, but yeah, it looks amazing. And uh, uh, yeah, I think the whole habitat was already like, I could build this better myself. So yeah, what kind of animal we, would we wanted to put like a Bengal tiger in there? And uh, there is a little zoo animal trading tab where you can choose trade animals. Also, your animals can be up for trading. So you can basically trade your own animals with other people, like other people's zoos, for example. You can see that there are different bars, size, longevity, fertility, and immunity, for example. So they have like four aspects of genetics. And basically your goal of course is to have everything in green so maybe you want to breed uh, breed them with others that have like better aspects in their genetics and have like everything in 100 percent and have like the perfect tiger healthy tiger that you can maybe then release into the wild again you know to maybe basically i don't know uh take care of them as a as a as an animal kind of station what is it called like medical station kind of zoo you know you know what i mean <laughs> but yeah um they of course wanted something to eat and to drink from so i put in like a little not water fountain but a water kind of thing and there were two trays so there's a small tray and a bigger tray and i was wondering why the large tray is like the same you know why why does it cost the same <laughs> and she was like oh that's still a bug like we will we will um do the whole financials later <laughs> but yeah so basically um if there is not enough food there your uh, or no food tray your animal keepers your zookeepers will also put them on the floor but that's not as healthy of course for the animals as they would if you put it on the tray for example and then we also choose an uh, enrichment item for the tiger which is here is something really interesting it's a blood pumpkin <laughs> I couldn't see him using it. We really wanted to, she really wanted to show me that because it's a little bit more metal. But yeah, basically they squeeze and squeeze around the blood, pu blood pumpkin and blood comes out and stuff. So it's basically like playing as if they're not killing an animal, but you know, putting out the flesh of the animal. So they have that um, reconstructed with this enrichment item. So it's like a really, really cool um, thing to see. Of course, our tiger wanted to go to the sprinkler and cool down a little bit. Also, you can see that there is some shade here that also comes into play for the heat the or the temperatures that the animals experience, I think. So now he has like this red fur and he looks gorgeous. He's an amazing animal. Like also because I was just playing this a little bit, but you get so proud of your animals. Like, oh, you are such a beautiful animal. <laughs> You're my zoo animal. It's like so, so cute. And uh, there we went um, that he was drinking. You can already hear and uh, next to the barrier all the visitors are. You can see them because it's the one way glass. But they're like, oh, it's a tiger. <laughs> so yeah, they were really into that. Um, and you can already see like the reactions of all the visitors. Also, visitors will demonstrate in front of your habitats if your, uh, if your sins, <laughs> oh my God, if your animals are too sick, if they are not happy enough, people will demonstrate and will also hate your zoo if they uh, think that your animals aren't happy. So that's uh, also really, really interesting. So you get like a feedback if your visitors really want to see your animals happy and, uh, you know, healthy and happy. 
and sound <laughs> and here we can see the tiger scratching oh my god this is so cool so yeah basically they will interact with everything it's really really interesting how uh, detailed everything is i was just in awe and yeah we had again of course a terrain problem we were doing lots of terrain painting in this in this little feature uh, in this little recording session it was just yeah again too too much long grass and not enough sand i think uh, so we had to put in some more sand for example or stone i'm not i'm not sure soil was it soil oh yeah it could also be soil um but yeah, basically there are lots and lots of people gathering in front of the glass uh, of the barrier because they are absolutely in love with our tiger. Um, also, maybe the visitors have their favorite animal that they want to see, I'm not sure. But that would be also cool as a feature. And yeah, our tiger gets more and more happy. So, that's cool. Yeah, here we had some problems like finding out how much green gra like grass I have to put there and how much sand <laughs> if we had some problems with that. Uh, but yeah, basically it's um, it's interesting how, how accurate the whole thing works. It's really, really cool. So your tiger doesn't need to climb, doesn't need any water here. I think you can put, of course, water if you want to or something to climb, but they won't use it if they are not used to that. So if your animals can swim, they, uh, I think they won't use it that much. Here we are into the genetics and he has 100% size. So he is the biggest animal tiger, tiger that you can see in anywhere in the zoo. So that was pretty good. But his longevity and his immunity was pretty low. So you might want to breed that with another uh, tiger that has maybe more immunity and longevity so yeah and his appeal is like super high because since he is so big he's like the biggest tiger like he's full grown up um the visitors like him more because he's like a special you know kind of tiger because he's so big uh, we were actually waiting for the tiger to use the blood pumpkin and show us a little bit more interacting with that but he was just like nah I'm a cat I'm not doing <laughs> I'm not doing what you want me to do <laughs> so yeah that was really really funny um we had this yeah like I said so many times uh, that the animals weren't doing what <laughs> what we wanted them to do but yeah this is just how animals work so that's really really interesting Especially I like the genetic system. So in animal trading, for example, I can now look for another tiger that has, uh, you know, the other features and stuff. So you can already see that in the animal trading. And there will be an in-game animal trading thing where you can basically trade with other people's animals that they have already in their park and also use that just for breeding and then sending them back um, because you don't want to have you know incest lines of incest legacies in there because that also of course makes your animals uh, not as um, happy here we are with the baby tapir i promised it to you here we are isn't it the cutest i was like oh <gasps> Oh, so cute. The best baby time here. So yeah, you can totally, if you get this game, look forward to all the baby tapirs and baby, you know, baby animals in general. I mean, ugh, oh my God, he is so cute. How he wiggle, wiggles his ears and just a little butt and of course the tiny little stripes and he was running. It's just, it's just so, so cute. <laughs> Yeah, I was really, really happy that I had uh, a tapir baby because apparently that's also like a hard thing to have because a tapir is a little bit more fiddly. Here we are in the last part. Uh, there can also be some exhibitions or exhibits. So terrariums with frogs, spiders, snakes, I think, and beetles. Um, here we have, an, I think, an anaconda, but I'm not sure. I just wanted to see how these look like. So you can have like little exhibits and also change the exhibit a little bit, like what kind of plants is in there, what kind of enrichment objects, etc. And um, 
also built around it as you can see and your it's like in real zoos where you have to look for them you know look for the animals like where is this little tiny frog in this huge exhibit so that's how it feels like sometimes and you can also of course use the camera to zoom into the to the animal here and here we are that's our anaconda python i haven't seen the overlay now <laughs> but yeah basically you can have lots and lots of uh, reptiles like i said beetles snakes spiders um iguanas are there as well and uh, probably lots and lots of more unconfirmed uh animals so yeah that is basically the whole planet zoo recording guys thank you so so much for watching it the whole thing through so so happy and hope that you liked it of course I'm really, really excited about this game. I'm, I'm sure you are too. You can build your own zoo. You can have lots of new animals, have to manage everything, have your, have to keep your animals happy and healthy and um, like tons and tons of building options, of course. And yeah, and if you want to have this, it comes out on November the 5th. But if you pre-order it now, there's a deluxe version where you can also already join the beta, which will be up in September now. I think it's 24th, I'm not sure. But there's a pre-release beta, so you can play it before everyone else. And uh, also you get three new animals with that, that only the deluxe version has. So uh, yeah, I'm totally looking forward to this. And of course, I will bring this to my channel as well. I hope you are into that. And we will look at totally lots and lots of cute animals, take care of them, build the best and most beautiful zoo with lots and lots of cool stuff. And I really, really hope that you enjoyed this. Maybe you're gonna get this game as well. Please write me in the comments what you want to see maybe in Planet Zoo. Also write me some questions about the game so I can ask the developers now and answer them, of course. So yeah, thank you so so much for watching i really hope that you enjoyed this please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and click the bell button so you get a notification and yeah that's basically it thank you so so much for watching and i will see you soon